Hello and welcome to News Click. The United States, the United Kingdom, and other Western countries seem to be on a collision course with Russia. Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Theresa May, recently accused Russia of using a chemical agent by the name of Novichok in the case of the alleged poisoning of ex-Russian spy and his daughter in UK. To discuss this issue, we have with us today Prabir Purkayasa, the editor-in-chief of News Click. So Prabir, after this uh, whole accusation came out, Nikki Haley also made a statement saying that now uh, Russia might use this agent even against the US. So what do you think of these allegations? Is this a part of some sort of war hysteria being created against Russia? It's a, it's a very difficult case to understand in, in terms of what has happened and what the intention of the Western powers, including the United States, is. I think it's extremely irresponsible for a country to accuse another of using a chemical agent in this fashion that the United, United Kingdom has done. With the Prime Minister of UK talking about poisoning of using a particular chemical agent. I'm going to go into the details of that a little later. But any ch charge of this kind needs to be backed up by solid evidence mm. because in essence you are creating a scenario which could lead to increased tensions and if they do lead between nuclear powers to increased tension, there is always the possibility of a war starting by accident. You know, that's how the First World War started. So I think this is something that we need to take cognizance of. The second issue that has come is that why would, for instance, Nikki Haley talk about scaremongering of this type, that a chemical agent uh, may be used in New York or the United States in some kind? Because at best, they are accusing of using a chemical agent against a, essentially a double agent. Mm. He was a Russian uh, intelligence uh, person mm. who acted as a double agent because yeah. the UK had actually uh, won, won him over with whatever uh, issues might be. And he was jailed for some time in Russia and then was exchanged against other Russian uh, agents. So this, is, this has been the basic background of uh, Skripal and his daughter, who both of whom have been claimed to be poisoned. Let's take the argument about the poisoning itself. Mm. We have no evidence that has been presented that they have been poisoned with this a specific poison. Okay. There have been issues that they were found in a place, they were unconscious, they were taken to a hospital. No hospital records have been released. Mm. No actual details mm. of the effect of poisoning, what they have, what has happened, no medical details have also been provided. Mm. Theresa May is talking about a certain chemical supposedly called Novichok. Yeah. Now this itself comes out of a book mm. by a Russian author uh, who is a uh, uh, state secret who was an in the intelligence of the Soviet Union who finally went and settled in the United, in the United mm. States who wrote a book saying that there is some very powerful uh, what is called fourth generation chemical weapons which were mm. created by Soviet Union and this was created in this Uzbekistan facility mm. and this had all these properties and he has also produced some formulas in his book saying that you know this is what a, the, this particular weapon can do. He has also claimed in his book that any laboratory from the formulas that he has given should be able to manufacture it. Okay. Now, a lot of people have commented that this seems to be a figment of his imagination, mm -hmm. <coughs> that these chemicals did or didn't exist is still an open question. At least the book does not prove there was something called Novichok ever. In 2016, a uh, senior uh, researcher mm -hmm. in the Porton Down facility, mm -hmm. which is the chemical facility for uh, United Kingdom, mm -hmm. which is supposed to be the one where, which is involved in the chemical weapons, or at least in the prevention of chemical weapons, supposedly where their top, uh, shall we say, experts are. Mm -hmm. One of them, again, wrote in a prestigious journal that he does not believe Novichok ever existed. Okay. okay, This is only a few years back, two years back. Mm. So why would I now be able to identify as UK when my two years back, my Porton Down facility 
did not believe in the existence of Novichok. Mm -hmm. How is it today, after this incident, we are seeing it exists mm -hmm. and we have traced its essential signature, essentially. Now, let's get into the chemistry of it a bit. Yeah, okay. because there are BBC reports also saying that it's made of two agent, two chemicals which are not too toxic and can be mixed together. Plenty of such reports going around, knowing yeah. how it's created. You see, this is all the current generation of uh, weapons, chemical weapons, mm -hmm. were binary weapons. Okay, binary yeah. weapons have exactly this property. So we are not surprised mm -hmm. that if it is claimed to be fourth generation, it would also be a binary weapon. Mm -hmm. And it had also binary weapons essentially have the property mm -hmm. that there are two by themselves, each gas mm -hmm. does not really cause problems. When mixed together, they become extremely poisonous. So that's again something you would expect of if it is a fourth generation, mm -hmm. it would have the property at least of the third and second generation mm -hmm. chemical weapons. So we're not surprised that that should be said by so-called experts. The question is, is such a thing like Novichok exists? I can describe it in any terms I want. Hmm. It's supposed to be X number of times more deadly than Vx. Hmm. If that is so, how are these two, two persons still alive? Hmm. Okay, they haven't died. So it, it's supposed to have happened in the car. How is it they were out on a bench? Hmm. So all kinds of questions would follow, but that's a separate issue altogether. I'm not getting into this that the, where the poison and what was the poison. I'm not getting into this at all. Or was really Russia involved in poisoning them? I'm, I'm leaving that question out. I'm saying if you're going to say a particular chemical has been used, mm. then I need to know that what is the composition of the chemical. Mm. Presumably a gas chromatograph would show me the composition of the chemical and I should be able to tell the world here is a gas chromatograph result which mm. so shows that it is what was described by the uh, that author, Russian author in his mm. book mm. that this conforms to the chemical compound. Second thing that you need to show that it was indeed done by Russia. And here is the issue. This Uzbekistan laboratory was dismantled by the Americans. So presumably Americans also know if Novichok was indeed being manufactured there. Americans also know how to do it. Mm -hmm. And if we believe the Russian author who said that these Novichok existed, mm -hmm. then and it can be developed from his uh, book, mm -hmm. then obviously any advanced laboratory can also do it. Mm -hmm. So the question is how do you know that Russians have done it? Mm -hmm. The book is available. If it is true, it is available. Uzbekistan presumably had knowledge of this. Americans certainly have the knowledge of this. Mm. So all of this would indicate that if I want to finger, as it were, Russia for this particular case, I would need Russian fingerprints. Mm. And how do you have fingerprints? You do the fingerprinting of by looking at the impurities in the particular chemical that is there, comparing it with the sample that you have had of this kind of chemical with these impurities and saying here are the fingerprints which show Russia has done it. Mm -hmm. The Russians manufactured Novichok, here is the impurities that were there, here is the fingerprint of Russia and you can see from the results of the poisoning I get the same fingerprints showing that it is this chemical compound mm -hmm. and there is a fingerprint. And this is exactly what Russia has said actually. They said you should be able to see the substance and you should be able to see the evidence that mm -hmm. it has been done by us. Without this, this evidence being presented, yeah. this is really trying to do warmongering, mm -hmm. accusing Russia without any basis. Mm -hmm. And if they want information from us, let them share what they have with the world. I mean, there's nothing to be kept secret in this. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, what in what way, if you did not know Novichok existed two years back and you know it now, then in what way is this information has been procured? What do you believe it formula to be? If it is indeed in the book, then why is it that you did not come to the OPCW, which is the body, which yeah. would look at all of this? And why has OPCW till date not received a complaint from UK or the US regarding Novichok as compounds? And why does OPCW actually reject that there is something called Novichok which needs to be put on the classified list. So all of this makes this whole claim that indeed that the Russians did it mm. is really something which at least no credible evidence has been provided. On the basis of this, creating some threats, asking various countries to sign on the dotted line, huge risk of war because Russia has done this. They've also talked about this is I think the first time in Europe 
that this has been used. Well, actually, Europe did send chemical weapons to Iraq in, in against their war on Iran. Mm -hmm. And UK was a country which had sent it, mm -hmm. as, as also the United States. These are the two countries which armed Iraq yeah. with uh, chemical weapons mm -hmm. and allowed it to be used against Iran. Mm -hmm. So that now to create so much of, shall we say, uh, talk about Europe, the chemical weapons were not used in Europe, smacks of hypocrisy of the UK on the UK's part. So I think, but, the, but to me, the whole issue is that why is at the moment such a song and dance of being made mm -hmm. of an attempt on the life of a double agent, if all this is true? And why would, would the countries really take it to that level without credible, credible evidence being provided to the world? Something really is, to me, appearing very, very uh, surprising. Mm -hmm. If you will, I have to honestly say, I don't know what the game plan of the United Kingdom is in this. Moving on to the next issue, let's look at uh, the firing of Rex Tillerson from his job by Donald Trump. Do you think this could uh, mean a more, uh, an escalated policy of the United States against Korea now? The argument that Trump is somebody who is completely out of control mm -hmm. and there are adults in the room, uh, which is Tillerson, Mattis and a few others. How true that, uh, shall we say, the narrative is, we don't know. Mm -hmm. we, this is increasingly looking like bedlam. Mm -hmm. The White House in, increasingly is in a bunch of uh, people who either are not clear what they're doing, but they seem to be busy blaming each other. Now Trump, of course, the chief wrecker, if you will, of mm -hmm. the government uh, structures, uh, now firing Tillerson as well. Now. Having said that, was Tillerson the one holding Trump under control? We don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay, from outside, it, we we would think all of them are mad because the way they have been be behaving, it does not really. Uh, if we see what they are saying, it doesn't appear to be the act of an of a responsible nuclear state. Mm -hmm. Now, on Korea as well as on Syria, mm -hmm. what the U.S. government's policy is. What Trump's policy is not clear to any of us. Mm. Trump seems to believe that if he behaves in a way that is irrational, mm. then he has better traction in diplomatic negotiations because people will not know when he's going to reach for the nuclear trigger. Mm. This uh, is one interpretation of Trump. Mm. The other in interpretation of Trump is really truly mad, mm. that he believes that you know if he rants, uh, raves, and uh, throws his weight around, he will get his way, mm -hmm. and if he doesn't get his way, then he can do anything. So these are the two possible explanations of Trump's behavior. Unfortunately, there is no way to predict a human being. Mm -hmm. So we don't really know. What we do know is that the US state policies now, the government's policies internationally, are becoming more and more unstable. Because as a series of uh, people get sacked, the procession leaving the White House is becoming bigger and bigger. Yeah. We don't have any continuity of U.S. policy. Mm -hmm. We do not know what they're going to do in Syria, what they're going to do in Iran, and of course right now about North Korea and South Korea's engagement. The important part of any summit, which is what is being proposed in North Korea uh, and uh, President and Trump, President Trump meeting, is that if there is no advanced no knowledge mm -hmm. of what the agreement is likely to be mm -hmm. and that groundwork is not done. If then a summit takes place and does not lead to any result, in which case you have made the situation worse. Mm -hmm. So summit by itself is not the issue, but summit needs that homework. Mm -hmm. At the moment, with the White House in turmoil, mm -hmm. with the State Department being headless, uh, of course we have got Pompeo now who has been made the head. All of these people are essentially hawks of a high order. Mm. So we do not know whether there is going to be any work done by which when you meet, you, are, you have a certainty of the outcome. Meeting without a certainty of the outcome, without that homework being done, I think is going to be more dangerous to the peace process than what is the situation right now. The only saving grace in this, I think South Korea is, has been shall we say, the, the grown-up in the room, the adult in the room, and is trying very hard to diffuse tensions with North Korea, is trying to get the United States to play ball, and 
if we look at the other players on the scene, mm -hmm. uh, of course, North Korea has responded very positively, positively to South Korea's overtures. But I think if we look at what Japan is doing and what United States is doing, I think we are in a scenario again of, uh, shall we say, an unstable uh, uh, foreign policy, mm -hmm. unstable external policies of these countries. And I'm not very, very sure at the moment what particularly the U.S., which is really the bigger issue over here, because they are the ones who still want to continue the state of hostility with North Korea, yeah. want to do their various uh, war games on the borders of North Korea. So I think with that uncertainty, we really will not know uh, what's going to come out of this. I'm personally, uh, I'm not very hopeful that the situation will improve with the summit. And I do believe that there is a possibility situation only get worse mm. if the summit takes place and nothing is resolved. So that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for joining us in this discussion, Prabhu. Thank you for watching this click.